Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, we are going to continue the embedded plate design according to Eurocode 1992, part 4. In the previous video, we went through the calculation of the tension force in the anchor bolts. Now, we need to check step by step according to the code and confirm that the selected plate and anchor bolts would pass the required criteria in the code. Let's recap what we had in the previous video. A concrete wall, C3037, with the thickness of 400 millimeter. Well, the product from Peiko, 300 by 300 millimeter plate, uh, 16 millimeter anchor bolt subjected to a compressive force of 120 kilonewton, bending moment of 20 kilonewton meter, and a shear force of 10 kilonewton, all in the design value. Also, we determined the distance that the concrete will be in compression. It was 106 millimeter, and also the tension in each tensile anchor bolt was 15.3 kilonewton times two for two anchor bolts so according to chapter 7 of eurocode 1992 part 4 we need to check several criteria in this video we are going to check the first two so a steel failure of fastener the characteristic resistance of a fastener in case of a steel failure and rks is given in the relevant european technical product specification the characteristic resistance is based on fuk so in our example, FUK from PECO Technical uh, Manual was, let's check one more time. So well, the product anchor material SD1 black steel, SD1 FUK is 450 and FYK 350 megapascal. And then we need to determine the gamma M, which is related to anchor bolt. Uh, and is given in table 4.1 a steel failure for fastener in tension and the value is determined according to 1.2 FUK divided by FYK but not less than 1.4 so in that case we can write down gamma MS for this check will be the maximum value of 1.2 FUK divided by FYK which will be 1.2 times 450 divided by 350 and it will be 1.54 and 1.4 which is 1.54 then it is wise if we always have but we are checking the first item that we are checking is a steel failure of fastener and in table 7.1 the required verification is given for this type of uh, loading so we are talking about group of anchor bolts it's not individual so we are not talking about single fastener in this case and we are in a group fastener and for a steel failure of fastener we only need to check this NED needs to be less than NRDS NED for this example is TED which is 15.3 kilonewton we determined this earlier and NRKS or NRDS is NRKS divided by gamma MS. So NRKS according to the uh, clause should be determined according to FUK. So it will be FUK times S area of steel divided by gamma MS. FUK is 450 megapascal and as is high 16 millimeter s square divided by 4 201 s square millimeter as a result nrds will be 450 times 201 divided by 1.54 as we calculated earlier so it is 58.75 kilonewton this is the resistance and the uh, applied load is 15.3 then we can easily calculate utilization ratio will be NED divided by NRDS so it will be 15.3 kilonewton divided by 58.75 kilonewton 26 percent 
this is just checking the first item we need to go on and check other items as well the next uh, option to be checked and verified is the concrete cone failure we can bring in what is given in the table 7 1 and also illustrative sketch how it should be done so the concrete cone failure is shown in uh, the picture B and also what needs to be done for verification when the a group of fasteners are under tension so again the first uh, option which is single fastener is not relevant to our case we are checking concrete cone failure group of fasteners and you just need to check the group of fasteners in this case if we look at the top view of our anchor plate so here we can see that only two anchor bolts are under tension and the other two are not under any tension so these two are forming a group so uh, we need to determine the NED of group already we have it NED of group is 2 times 15.3 kilonewton 30.6 kilonewton is the tension in these two anchor bolts then we need to determine NRDC for calculation of NRDC we need to determine NRKC and take gamma MC so gamma MC can be taken from table 41 which we uh, went through in the introduction of this uh, example so gamma MC is taken as 1.5 I want to bring it to our notes that we can have a look better from table 41 failure mode concrete related failure concrete cone failure gamma mc is gamma c times gamma instantaneous and gamma c is 1.5 and also gamma instantaneous is taken one for headed fasteners and anchor channels that satisfying the given class which is not in our scope at the moment headed fasteners one so gamma mc will be 1.5 times 1 and it's 1 point so in the given equation we just need to determine nrkc which is given in another clause of uh, chapter 7 of the code so concrete cone failure 7214 item 1 the characteristic resistance of a fastener a group of fasteners and the tension fasteners of a group of fasteners in case of concrete cone failure shall be obtained as given in formula 71 nrkc which we are looking for for the group is nrkc 0 times acn divided by acn 0 and times with four other factors that we will go through the different factors of formula 71 are given below one by one nrkc 0 k1 times s square root fck times hef power by 1.5 so HEF we went through which was 157 millimeter according to the given dimensions for this product that we select FCK as far as we are uh, using C3037 is 30 megapascal and K1 is taken as if you are checking with cracked concrete or uncracked concrete for sure cracked concrete is more critical and you are in safe side if you select this option K crack N and K on crack N are given in the corresponding European technical products specification. Indicative values are 7.7 .7 and 11 for post installed. Our case is not post installed, as a result, this is not our case. And 8.9 and 12.7 for cast in headed fasteners. Our case is cast in headed fasteners, and as far as we are going to check with the cracked condition k c r n will be 8.9 so we have all the required uh, values to determine nrk0 so nrk0 will be 8.9 30 megapascal times 157 millimeter power by 1.5 now the result will be 95.9 kilonewton one important note is when you are writing this kind of uh, progress in a unit based software application like for example in this case matcap then if you have a square root power by 2 third power by 1.5 or something else then you need to write the code in a way that uh, 
the progress is in the correct format of the calculation. So let's have a look on our MATCAD code. I have it here. So in the previous video now I noticed that this FCK should be 30 megapascals since it was C3037 by a misprint I wrote 17 but it doesn't affect the calculation as we can see it's 15.3 just selection of FC guess was the difference so now here we are going to calculate NRK0 it's K1 times S square root FCK times H effective power by 1.5. I think we do not have H effective. Here we can add H effective, which is 157 millimeter. Also K1, we need to determine it somewhere in our calculation. I would suggest do not write all the factors in the beginning. Just the required information would be better and then put your uh, values, which should be entered in the middle and uh, put all the things in any section that you can easily spot where they are and what you need to do. So here, if we have the answer, you will see that the result is not Newton. So if I write it as kilonewton, as I would expect, we can see that we have this uh, extension to the units, which is not desired. The reason is that the given values and the equation is not a uh, unit based you need to implement a method to get the right answer. So here it's better if you divide this FCK with megapascal and also H effective by millimeters. So then you have a unitless uh, value, which is 95 or 96,000 in this case. It seems that the equation is given in Newton. So then the easiest way is to multiply this equation by newton so now the result is newton and if you change it to kilo newton you will have the same results as we determined 95.9 here is the calculation of nrkc not or zero then we need to continue with these two important factors affecting the entire characteristic resistance in the same chapter of the code and in item 3, clause 3, we can see the definition of these two important parameters. ACN and ACN0, the geometric effect of actual spacing and edge distance on the characteristic resistance is taken into account by this fraction value ACN divided by ACN0. ACN0 is the reference projected area where it is given in figure 7.3. So ACN0 is always according to uh, one single anchor bolt which is determined by SCRN times SCRN. SCRN is the required distance uh, to break with a cone shape. According to uh, current experience as stated in the code SCRN is three times H effective. So it means that uh, the concrete would uh, fail in this mode by an angle of 35 degree. If we want to check if it's, this is the anchor bolt and here is the surface. And now we are checking the angle here. This is 1.5 times H effective and this is one H effective. So here this angle B is determined with a ton h effective divided by 1.5 h effective which is 1 divided by 1.5 it is 33.7 let's say about 34 degrees so almost 35 34 degree is the mm, angle of failure so it means that if we have tension on one uh, anchor bolt it's failing in an angle of 34 with the current experience that is stated in the code so acn0 is very straightforward we can calculate by determining uh, scrn which is three times h effective so that is the first step let's go for that and determine scr h effective is 157 millimeter so scr n will be three times H effective, which is 157 times three, 471 millimeter. And then ACN0 
zero will be SCRN times SCRN. 22.1841 square millimeter. Uh, the important parameter here is ACN, is the actual projected area limited by overlapping concrete cones of adjacent fasteners as well as by edge of concrete member. An example for the calculation is given in the other figure, figure 7.4, that we can have it and we can go through the instruction. So in Figure 7.4, we can see this is just illustration of one example when we have the uh, embedded plate in the corner, how it is determined. Uh, ACN is, uh, let's, let's read it. When the fastening is close to one edge only, the value of C1 or C2 parallel to the edge should be replaced by half of SCRN and expression for ACN should be modified accordingly. Actual area of the idealized concrete cone for a group of four fasteners example. So here it means that these four anchor bolts are under tension. That's the first important uh, uh, note that we have to consider. Not all cases would be the same. We need to check how many bolts are in tension first. So in this example, it is assumed that four bolts are in tension. So four bolts are in tension then the left rows of the bolts are very close to the edge. As a result, the distance from the center of these bolts to the edge of concrete is less than half of SCRN or CCRN. So the distance is less than this value. As a result, there is no way to have that uh, 34, 35 degree angle to have a full concrete failure. So this is not happening in that side. Moreover, in the bottom line, the center of anchor bolts are close to the edge. Again, C2 is a smaller than half of SCRN. So as a result, we have a limitation to the concrete edge. On the other side of this uh, example, we have enough concrete to cover the half of SCRN from this direction as well as the other direction. So then you can sketch the area of actual projected area of uh, this ACN. One thing is important here, which S1 and S2, if they are very wide, let's say if they are far from each other and they cannot cover half of SCRN in each direction, then we need to limit ACN as well. So let's have a look uh, based on our numbers. So here we have one, two, three, and four bolts. Let's say this is our case uh, and we have enough concrete. Let me sketch this somewhere here and assume that we have enough concrete that in either directions we have enough space for half of SCRN and again assume that all bolts are in tension so here if half of SCRN is covering up to this line and this line then we do not have uh, the whole system to be considered as ACN so in this case ACRN if we go with a nice sketch here so you can see that ACN is not the entire area combining or merging distance between those two lines which are far from each other. So we have to notice how to calculate ACN. This is one example. If the fasteners are far from each other, then ACN needs to be determined properly. So let's determine ACN for our Example, this is our plate 300 by 300 and here are our bolts. We determined the distance from the bolts to each side. It was 110 millimeter and only two bolts are in tension. So you do not need to consider the other two bolts which are not in tension. Only two bolts which are in tension. So from each side of the uh, group of the bolts in tension we need to go with half of SCRN so SCRN was three times edge effective which is 471 millimeter and also CCRN which is 
half of this value 235.5 so from the line of uh, having these two together to the left we have enough space to cover this 235.5 to the right also we have the same possibility we have 235.5 millimeter in each direction to the left to the right also the distance between these two anchor bolts is 180 millimeter and it is less than SCRN it means that they cover each other and we do not need to consider half from each side they are merging the concrete cone failure but when it comes to the edge distance from top tension bolt to the edge of concrete it's limited to 110 so we cannot cover 235.5 millimeter the same goes for the bottom tensile anchor bolt so as a result the area that we need to consider for this example is 235.5 towards right 235.5 towards left and to the top and bottom we are limited to edge of the concrete wall so here this is the area of ACN in our example so ACN from one direction it is 471 millimeter and from the other direction it is the width of the wall 471 times 400 millimeter so 471 400 is 18a to 400 so coming back to the basic equation we have nrkc0 we have acn acn0 and now we need to determine four factors psi sn takes account of the disturbance of the distribution of stresses in the concrete due to the proximity of an edge of the concrete member. For fastening with several edge distances, or fastening in a corner of the concrete member or in a narrow member, the smallest edge distance C shall be inserted in this given equation. Psi Sn is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 C divided by CCRN. Already we have CCRN which is 235.5 millimeter. C also is the closest distance to the edge. So here if we look at the tensile reinforcement, so this is the plate one direction it is 110 millimeter and in the other direction it's quite uh, far from that the other edge as a result c will be 110 millimeter then we can determine the psi s and n will be 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 times 110 divided by 235.5 and it is 0 0.84 the other factor out of uh, four is the shell spalling factor psi r e n applies when h effective is less than 100 so uh, h effective here is 157 millimeter and it is not less than 100 millimeter as a result psi r e n will be taken as one uh, the factor psi r e n may be taken as one in the following cases you can read by yourself there are some cases if H effective is less than 100, you can uh, still use the value of 1 if uh, some kind of criteria are met. So the other factor will be psi eccentricity. The factor psi eccentricity N takes account of a group effect when different tension loads are acting on the individual fasteners or of a group. So uh, where there is an eccentricity in two directions, psi eccentricity N shall be determined separately for each direction and the product of the both factors shall be inserted in formula 71, which is the base calculation in our case. So let's have a look on some simple examples uh, before we go through our case so assume that you have two bolts both in tension and the load here is let's say 10 kilonewton and the other one is 20 kilonewton and assume that the distance between these two is 150 millimeter so now uh, these two bolts are loaded unevenly so the center of the load will be somewhere here which is now 50 millimeter so y is 
10 kilonewton times 150 millimeter plus 20 kilonewton times 0 divided by 10 kilonewton plus 20 kilonewton so it will be 50 millimeter then eccentricity is taken from the center of these two so eccentricity will be 25 millimeter so here is how we determine the eccentricity for example if you have four volts in tension this is compression side and here let's say we have 20 kilonewton and these two are let's say 10 kilonewton and the distance between these two is 150 millimeter again the center is closer to these two kilo 20 kilonewton then we have this 50 millimeter and the center of these four is 75 millimeter as the result eccentricity will be 25 millimeter these two are examples when the uh, bolts are uh, not making uh, eccentricity in two directions but if you have a situation where you have four bolts all in tension and let's write down some values let's say this is 10 this is 15 this is 20 and this is let's go with 15 and the distance between uh, these two let's assume 150 and the other direction 180 so in this case the center of the bolts is here but the load is not acting in the center of these four bolts so in the horizontal direction x will be 20 plus 15 times 0 plus 10 plus 15 times 180 divided by 20 plus 15 10 plus 15 so this is in horizontal direction it will be 25 180 divided by 60 so it will be 75 millimeter in one direction and in y direction it will be 20 plus 15 times 0 plus 15 plus 10 times 150 divided by 20 plus 15 15 plus 10 25 150 divided by 60 so it will be 62.5 millimeter now if we uh, sketch the center in the x direction 75 millimeter so then this will be 15 millimeter eccentricity in x direction in y direction 62.5 and then from 75 12.5 millimeter so this is eccentricity in one direction the other one is eccentricity in the other direction then we need to determine two psi eccentricity for x or y and then multiply them in the basic equation. In our case, both bolts are loaded evenly. As a result, we do not have any eccentricity. So for our case, En is 0, then psi eccentricity N will be the last factor, the factor psi mn takes into account the effect of a compression force between fixture and concrete in case of bending moment with or without actual force. So psi mn is 1 for the following cases, fastening with an edge distance less than 1.5 edge effective. So here for us, C is uh, 110 millimeter and 1.5 edge effective was 235.5 millimeter as a result c is less than 1.5 h effective we can assume that psi mn is 1. so now we have all the required factors to determine the nrkc based on equation 7 1. so i bring this equation that we can just substitute the values according to our calculation nrkc0 we determined that it was 95.9 kilonewton acn we determined earlier and acn0 22 18 41 and the other one was acn 18 80 400 psi sn 0 0.84 1 1 and 1 so 95.9 times 18.84 divided by 22 18.41 84 it will be 68.4 kilonewton this is the characteristic value and now we have everything for the calculation and confirmation of this uh, criterion which is given according to the entire uh, the whole group in tension so for our case this value is 30.6 kilonewton and nrdc 
and ED of the group and RDC is 68.4 kilonewton divided by gamma MC, which was 1.5. So it is 45.6 kilonewton. As a result, utilization ratio for this check will be 30.6 kilonewton divided by 45.6 kilonewton, and it's 67%. So this is the concrete cone failure for this example. Uh, there are other notes that should be considered when you are checking concrete cone. You can refer to the given uh, instruction in the code 1992 part four. That was the end of this video. We went through the first two verifications uh, for the headed fasteners embedded in concrete. And we checked a steel failure and also concrete cone failure. In the next video, we will continue with checking the plate for other criteria that are given in the code. Thank you for watching and bye.